for a, a young guy in my, in my early 20s, I was uh, pretty fortunate to be honest, like fully sponsored and, and uh, running a guiding business and writing plenty of magazine articles uh, and getting official around the world. In my eyes, the world's best anglers are really good at everything. I think the best anglers are as good on big heavy tackle marlin as they are at size 22 dry flies and finicky trout and everything in between. I'm Micah Adams, I guess I'm a fisherman, definitely a fly fisherman, that's what I'm sort of known for and uh, I've been really lucky, I've had a really long and fairly successful career in, in the fishing industry. I had an idea to create a TV series. Instead of just 30 minutes of just fishing, I wanted to really showcase the adventure in getting to these exotic destinations, you know, because often the journey is as big a part. So I started a, a, a program which I called Adventure Angler, and that ran for about a decade. For me, it was a wonderful opportunity. You know, it took me to about 25 different countries that I got to fish, and got to see some pretty amazing stuff and, and really a lot of my milestones in my fly fishing career have been lucky enough to be on camera, which is incredible. But eventually I needed a break, family and life changes, and it was a one year break, but it was about five years ago. So uh, <laughs> maybe one day I'll get back into that. I met Dave Bradley, I think in my early 20s, I was, uh, I was a, you know, a young photojournalist being sent on this sort of mothership assignment in Cape York and Dave was one of the guides there and um, we uh, were similar kind of age but very similar kind of blokes really and um, him and I just really got on and we've basically been best mates ever since. We're going to one, it's at one o'clock. Dave was right a pivotal part of Adventure Angler, he was in every single season as a co-host. We try and catch up every every single year. <laughs> Good thing it wasn't permanent. Yeah, he's been down here uh, in the Snowy Mountains once. I absolutely buried him with his feet. He never wears boots, always wears thongs only, like even thongs is dressing up for him. So um, taking him back country and here in Kosciuszko, I sorted him out pretty good. But um, we did catch a lot of fish and we certainly drank a bit of rum, which is kind of nice too. Well, wearing shoes and Doing a whole lot of walking is just not my sort of activities. It's fun, but I pay for it. Uh, I've known Micah possibly almost 20 years, I reckon. There's plenty of memorable stories because I think I worked out it really costs so much to make television because of the alcohol bills. But aside of those stories, I guess, um, you know, some really cool fishing, really, like be it queen fish. Chasing Permit here at the Tarpon in Florida. Bahamas was fun, you know, the bone fishing and, and the alcohol related activities. Has Micah ever taken you marlin fishing? Yeah, but I, I hate marlin fishing. <laughs> it keeps inviting me and I keep making up excuses not to come. <laughs> <laughs> really enjoy the marlin fishing. It's, it's a, definitely a team effort. And, you know, some people, if they haven't done much marlin fishing, will say, oh, you, you don't want to wind it in. And it's kind of the last thing I want to do. You know, I've probably caught four or 500 marlin sails. The last thing I want to do is wind another one in. I really want to be up in the tower on the throttles and watching it all happen. And He's coming up behind you now. Yes, pulling these fish up to sort of seven or eight metres from the transom before you do the switch. You're You're watching the bite, the whole crew is seeing a marlin all lit up. And uh, you know, it's the best seat in the house, really. Oh, he's gonna jump. Oh. You know, if, if Luke gets or Byron gets to get on the leader and a good fish, that's you know, that's what you want as a crewman. You, know, you want to have that last sort of tug of war or you know, hand line with, with a good marlin. It's a pretty uh, nice feeling, and it's certainly a, a proud feeling for me to be able to introduce these kids to some great fishing. Yes, boys. You know, they've all started fishing off jetties and piers and beaches, you know, maybe off a tinny, but to give them the opportunity to fish on a bigger boat and target, you know, big, exciting fish, certainly a pretty special feeling. I can't think of really a better day in your life than spending a day 
wading through a high country mountain stream casting a dry flight trout. It is just pure in, in every essence. You know, you've just got this nice little light three, four, five weight flyer rod, box of dry flies, and some tippet. And it just can't, can't get any purer than that. You get so fixated on this, watching the drift of this dry fly all day, that you're almost like meditating. And you become so in tune with, with that fly that everything else around you just goes. I think, I think deceiving a fish. I think that's what fly fishing's all about. I just want to watch fish eat a fly. I mean, it's unreal when you get to just watch that moment they eat the fly, but it's even better when you can spot a fish, you know, pick a path, present a fly, and then watch it, watch it approach, look at its body language, and then, you know, the moment where it comes up, eats that fly off the top, ideally, that's fishing. Lose that fish from that point, doesn't matter. You know, you've got the best out of the fish right there.